so you want to emulate that. So I'll take this down a little bit more. Say that's not bad. So you can imagine now the base of the acorn is sitting in here and this is the top lip, so we get a little bit more. Good time to wear white, eh? It's nice with black all up. All right, and then typically it's it's got a round to it. I meant to do that. All right. So you've got the bottom of it shaped off. You can sand this now. Um, when you look at Ron Brown's video, he will actually use a knurling tool and he'll put a pattern on that as it stands and he'll pattern the bottom of the acorn. Because when he does his acorns, they're patterned all the way around. I don't do that. I'll, I like it smooth all the way around. And I don't have a tool for it. You want $65 for a tool, and I'm not going to pay that for a knurling uh, tool. So I'll be just content to say that's a nice little lip that's going to go over, that's going to sit on the acorn. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll say that's pretty close to the top height, so we'll just part it off. momentum it will go that way right yeah okay normally I don't use something this thick because it causes a, a lot of vibration takes a lot of wood off I used the, I brought it in one time, a tool, a little um, sawzall blade that's just nice and thin and you can cut with that just as easily. Uh, less bite. that around. I'll need it back in a couple of minutes. So I'll finish off the face, flatten it out, drill again. Shape it, cut it off, finish off the face, drill again, cut it, you know, shape it, cut it. It's the same process. So I, I can take a, you know, I will take a long piece like this and I'll just make as many as I can out of that piece of wood. Just depends on the piece of wood you have. You know, if it's short, it's short. If it's longer, it's longer. Use what you need to use. I think I'll just put this one. This one's already got a tenon, so that's good. Will it fit? Yes. use a smaller drill bit and just drill a hole but you end up with a flat bottom right um, you can do it with a tool so you can go in with a, a spindle gouge and you can go in here and you can hollow out an area and get a nice round you know piece of business in there it looks really good and hopefully it'll work out and you're not too big and not too small. Um, 
Lee Valley sells rotor bits. And this is called a box core bit or a coring bit. Um, it's one inch in diameter. And so I can drill with this. I can use this cutter head to cut a one inch hole. It's got a nice bottom on it. It's nice and smooth. Works like a charm. And it's consistent. It's a one inch hole and I've got a one and a quarter inch top that's going around so it leaves me an eighth of an inch on each side to make it fit in that. So we'll see that. So I use the coring bit <coughs> and that's what Ron Brown uses. So he'll do the same thing. He uses a coring bit to go through, make the, the hole and then the rest of it is just a fitting process. designed to be nice and round consistently so when you look at that on the profile it's round so it won't find home so you need to show it where home is and you show it where home is not by doing that didn't fly off, we're good. <laughs> yeah, no scars so far. Um, that's why you have it locked in fairly good, but yeah, you can get to catch. Um, it doesn't take much. You know, I move the tool rest with it running and normally you don't do that. And, it's, and I normally do practice that. I try to stop it and move the tool rest, especially when it's running at higher speed. Um, but I was just doing some basic sanding yesterday on some angels and um, and it just so happened whatever the position was of the tool rest which was out of the way because I was sanding and the, this, you know, the lathe is turning and I'm out here sanding the, the angel and I moved and my belt hook caught the tool rest just perfectly and didn't I sort of drag it into the wood as I said, and I sitting there, how the heck did that? And it was just the positioning of the handle, and my body and my belt loop was just perfect. And all of a sudden, boom! And I wasn't, you know, it was just running. I was just standing, normally standing still. But I had to reach for something, and when I came back, lo and behold, I dragged the rest with me. So you never know what will happen. So this, again, low speed. We'll see how that works out. It's a little higher speed. Now, um, this is positioned up and down. This has a tremendous amount of torque in it. Um, it's, it's designed as a router bit to run at a very high speed and I'm running it at a very low speed. Um, I've got a Nova lathe and it's not a fixed head. The head on my lathe is designed to turn so I can do outside turning, or if I wanted to hollow it out and I don't feel like bending over, I can turn my head and I can work on it comfortably out here. So my lathe head will turn this way. The first couple times I did this, as soon as I touched it and started going in, all of a sudden the thing would start, it would shift on me. And it was because 
I was, my approach to cutting was this way with the bit and it was putting so much lateral torque that the clamping mechanism to keep this from moving wasn't strong enough. You know, and I had it torqued down pretty good, but obviously not enough to keep the head from turning. So I have to, when I do mine, I turn it this way. So I make sure that it's up and down. So now the torque is displacing up and down. Now I'm fighting the bed and all the mechanisms there so the head doesn't move at all. So it's just the, it's just that little bit when you're talking about, you know, how how dangerous can it throw you? It's got a lot of torque in it. So I'm gonna turn it like this, and again, always hang on to the to the bit, especially when you're withdrawing, because if you don't, it could disengage from from here, and now you've got something loose that's spinning, and then it'll uh, it'll cause grief, and you'll end up with damage or or worse. <laughs> so far and then it jams up and you've got to pull the pieces out I didn't bring a screwdriver up here but and then you go back in this is probably about the only slowest part of this process 